this is hard for me to read because I have kids and I cannot imagine dealing with this with them. Hello, welcome to my channel, Outspoken Samantha. On my channel, I like to give my personal opinion and perspective on current events and issues that I think actually matter to everyday people, especially those of us that are trying to raise kids in the insanity known as today's society. We are not CEOs of big corporations, we're not part of the mainstream media, we don't live in the Hollywood bubble, and we are not politicians in Washington, D.C. If you feel like this describes you, please like this video, share this video, leave a comment below, and subscribe to my channel. All of these things help me to grow my channel and hopefully reach more people that value logic, reason, and sanity. Also be sure to find me on Rumble under Outspoken Samantha in the event that YouTube decides that I have violated their communist, I mean community standards, and chooses to kick me off their platform forever. That being said, let's get into today's topic. So this topic of gender ideology that I pretty much follow everywhere because I want to know exactly all of the ways that my kids could potentially come across it. And not because I don't want them to know that it exists because it's pretty much impossible at this point, um, unless you live under a rock, to keep your children from knowing that this ideology is out there. So and I'm not trying to do that because I know that my kids are gonna come across it and I want them to know what to expect and exactly you know how to handle it if they can um you know and i honestly think that there that most parents don't see this as a big deal that for one thing they really do think it's about teaching tolerance and acceptance and really just getting a broader understanding of all the lifestyles out there the different lifestyle choices that people make the different identities that people might have and really just being accepting of whoever someone wants to be um I think that there is a lot of parents that think that, well, my child has never experienced um, gender dysphoria. They've never shown any signs of having discomfort in their own skin and in their own body, so I don't have to worry about it. If they read a book about gender identity, it's not going to affect them because that's not who they are. If they go to an event with a drag queen, it's not that big a deal. Um, and then they really do think that it's beneficial to have there for the students that it does apply to because you know there might be kids in the class that really do identify this way or really do have these inclinations um, and they want their own kids to understand what it is so that they can be accepting of the classmates that this does relate to. Um, but I think there's a bit of a separation in the, in the idea that just because it's in the classroom with their child doesn't mean that their child is gonna be the one um, that follows it. And then of course there are the parents where it's pretty obvious that they're pushing this identity on their kids for their own benefit, for their own popularity, and for their own praise and recognition. Where it's it's a case of Munchausen syndrome by proxy, where they're projecting these signs and symptoms onto their kid and convincing their kid that this is who they are, so that as their parent, they can receive praise as the parent of a transgender child, uh, of a child that's breaking the gender norms and you know breaking the mold and living outside of societal expectations. Um, so there's a lot going on here. So I do want to read a couple of stories that I came across on social media today. These are public stories, um, but I wanted to share them with you because I think they are really, really, really important. First, I just wanted to recommend a couple of sources that I think are really important in this topic and understanding um, what is happening uh, to our kids these days. Um, first is to get the book Irreversible Damage by Abigail Schreier. Um, read it, especially if you have teenage girls, um, because as you will find in this book, this gender ideology and gender transitioning really has targeted our teenage girls, specifically at a time when they are going through puberty, when they are the most vulnerable, when they are the most insecure, when they are the most looking for acceptance and the most uncomfortable with their bodies. Um, you will find that the vast majority of gender transition cases has been in teenage girls. Please read that book if you have a teenage daughter, perhaps even read it with them so that they can be aware. Another great resource to look into is James Lindsay. He has done so much research on this topic, on gender identity and gender ideology and its origins in queer theory. He was actually just recently banned from Twitter 
So we know that probably means he's telling the truth. He did a really good interview recently with uh, Ali Beth Stuckey. Her podcast is called Relatable. Um, it was within the last month or two, so I know it was recent. I watched it, very insightful. Also, he did had a really great conversation with Liz Wheeler over on her channel recently, um, and he had a little clip on Breitbart News um, this week, I believe as well. Um, but he frequently cites this academic paper that specifically was written to outline the goals and the agenda to tell us explicitly what the goals of this ideology is. And spoiler alert, it has nothing to do with kids living their best lives or discovering their true identity or teaching society love and tolerance and acceptance. It has absolutely nothing to do with any of those things. In the paper, it explicitly says that this is about uh, introducing these concepts to kids at a young age so it's normal to them, that they do and will eventually adopt some kind of queer identity, that they will start to see the queer community as their real family, and then start to break away from their home unit, from their family at home, and turn against their own parents. And I know a lot of people are thinking that that sounds like I'm being an alarmist, that I'm fear-mongering, that I'm trying to just scare people away from this ideology, or that I have some kind of um, religious bias that, you know, I don't want kids to learn about this or whatever it is. But unfortunately, the truth is that scary. And that is where these stories come in. So in Abigail Schreier's book, she refers to this phenomenon called rapid onset gender dysphoria or ROGD. It refers to the sudden development of a feeling of dissociation from one's biological sex in adolescent years, typically following intensive social media use, often influenced by peers, and often a maladaptive coping mechanism for other problems. While we're constantly being told that kids are uh, adopting these transgender identities and these queer identities because we have a progressive society that's more accepting of alternative gender expression and allowing kids to be who they are and allowing people to express themselves in whatever way makes them feel comfortable, that this is why this surge has happened. What's really happened is that kids who have never experienced any signs or symptoms of being uh, gender dysphoric, of being uncomfortable in their own skin or in their own body or feeling like they need to be the opposite gender who have never shown any signs of that before, only after spending a significant amount of time online, whether it be in a chat group or forums of which there are numerous and being convinced of this ideology that they, that they emerge feeling like this is who they are. And that if they are experiencing anxiety or depression or nervousness about, you know, their growing or changing body or anything like that, it's because they were born in the wrong body. It's because they have the wrong identity. And then these other issues go unchecked and they go untreated and unaddressed. And these kids are told that if they just change their name and change their wardrobe and change who they are, that it's going to fix these other things. And this just sets in motion the separation of this child, of these teenagers, from their parents. Because the people in the online chats and forums and discussion groups are now their real family. We're the ones that really care about you. We're the ones that really understand you. We're the ones that know the truth about who you really are. Your parents don't understand and they will never accept you. And that's just the start kids that are so desperate at that time for that that acceptance that community that group of friends it's easy to pull them in at this point in time in their lives and then in no time at all parents are suddenly being told by this child that they have known their entire lives that they know you know they've known since the moment that they were born that suddenly this child believes that everything that they know about themselves is a lie and it comes out of nowhere I found this story on Twitter that I really wanted to share with you. Um, it just absolutely broke my heart. So let's read it together. It said, says, a year ago, I had never heard of ROGD until I received the letter. My 15-year-old son, who has never had any problems with his body or his sex, tells me that he is a girl. When I started reading the letter, 
I thought that it was announcing his homosexuality, that it was going to be liberating, that it was a sign of growth, that we were going to be able to talk about it, and that perhaps it was related to his deep depression. That was not what I read. I read the unexpected, the nonsense. I spent years taking care of his childhood and reading his feelings and his needs. That girl never showed up. As a society, we were living the backlash of child sexual abuse, which taught us that children must be believed. We came back from recognizing that homosexuality should never be questioned or demonized. My progressivism and familiar identification with the left told me that I should move forward, that I had to recognize what my sweet boy told me. But my instinct began to tell me otherwise. This doesn't fit. It doesn't make sense to me. I can't see it. My love and deep knowledge of this child began to scream inside me. I could, I could see a boy who didn't want to grow up, a sensitive boy who was terrified of hurting, anxious about social relationships and with practically non-existent self-esteem. Could he be all those things at the same time in a healthy way? The therapists pushed me to continue, the endocrinologists to hormone, society to accept, until the book by Abigail Schreier came into my hands. My heart pounded as I read the testimonials of other mothers. Because I recognized myself, I recognized us. And then she goes on to cite a few other studies that she read by Lisa Littman, um, Stella O'Malley, and continues. What this knowledge gave me was confidence. I regained confidence in my motherhood, in my common sense, in my ability to observe, in recognizing myself in charge. I found the thread. Tomorrow, as in today, marks ROGD Awareness Day. ROGD is not just the description of a phenomenon. Knowing of its existence has allowed me to live honestly again. The honesty I owe myself and my sweet dear boy is a work in progress. Some of the follow-up comments to this in knowing that this is not just an isolated incident, this is not just one mother whose heart is breaking. <sighs> This is hard for me to read because I have kids and I cannot imagine dealing with this with them. As I'm with you, Mama, I also struggle every day to help my ROGD daughter. It makes me sick to think so many with you mutilate and sterilize her in the name of being progressive. Stay strong. Their comment says, I have an ROGD daughter who declares she was non-binary after she'd already left home. I didn't collude, but I was always loving. We were distant for a while. But she told me recently that she had seen through the ideology. The physical damage had already been done, sadly. Another comment says, We are nine months into this. I have supported my son. Yet he has gone to live with his dad who isn't supportive. It has broken me completely. What is clear is there are lots of us in this. Same situation, although my daughter is mid-twenties and has completely disowned anyone connected with the first 21 years of her life. I hope one day she will find herself and come back. Stay strong. And if you search the hashtag ROGD on Twitter, um, you will find numerous stories like this. Another one is, this has been my experience with my daughter, a sweet, girly, popular, funny, smart, beautiful woman who at 24 suddenly started dressing like a boy. It's been eight months of hell, research and sheer will, but so far we have kept her from drugs and social transitioning. Thread shared the instance of one parent found, uh, one parent even found text message, text messages from a counselor to her daughter advising the child to leave home so she could escape her skeptical parents and freely pursue her newly found wish to transition to being a boy. So we're seeing the things that are outlined in this academic paper that talk about queer theory, that talk about the goals and objectives in it of separating parents from their kids, of kids seeing their parents as people that are unsafe. We're seeing all of that happen right in front of our eyes. And it's coming to light more and more. Parents are sharing their stories and sharing their heartbreak. And these are not just one-off incidents. They're not just isolated incidents that it's only happening to a select group of people. Any of our kids are 
susceptible and vulnerable to this. It's not something where we can just step back and say, well, my kid has never shown any signs or symptoms or interests in being another gender or changing their identity. So it doesn't affect me. It doesn't matter. And reading, you know, a book here and there or um, participating in a drag queen story hour or having a conversation with a friend about it, it's not going to affect them because that's not who they are. Um, none of us have the luxury of doing that because this can literally affect any child at any time, any family. Um, we need to be proactive, not reactive, because once you're, this has been ingrained into your child, especially if they have an underlying issue like anxiety or depression and they are looking for a coping mechanism of some kind, once this has become their answer and their identity, it is so much more difficult to undo. It's so much more difficult to put pieces back together. And things that you can't undo once they have gone down that rabbit hole, you can't undo puberty blockers and hormone treatments. Thankfully, there are kids, there are some kids that are able to go on these really potent drugs and then come off of them with little to no side effects. But there are a lot of kids that aren't so lucky and there is absolutely no way to know if your kid is gonna be one of them or not. Or if your girl who decides to go on testosterone or puberty blockers um, and has her voice changed to sound like a man, if she's going to get her girly feminine voice back if she decides to go off of those drugs. And, one, and things that you cannot undo you can't undo it if your daughter decides to remove her breasts or to remove her ovaries. You can't just undo it if your son decides to remove his genitalia and attempt to become a woman. You can't undo those things. And all of these things are stepping stones, whether it be you know, uh, gender identity books in their first grade classroom, whether it be a discussion with a teacher, whether it be an online chat or forum, these are all stepping stones in that direction. And none of these things are harmless. And as I've said before, when people call me a transphobe, it's not funny to me. It's just the fact that I do have fear, but it's not of transgender people. It's for these people. I have so much fear for our kids who are being led down this path to alter their bodies in these permanent, damaging, long-term ways that they do not understand the long-term repercussions of and one day waking up and realizing that they've made a huge mistake, that parts of their body are gone, that they have no feeling where they should have feeling, they have no function where they should have function, and that they wished somebody would have stepped in and stopped them. I really want to start a Read Your Stories series on this channel surrounding this topic, families that have experienced these things um, at any level, whether it be, you know, a, your child uh, came to you and said that they wanted to be the opposite gender and you were able to kind of um, ease out of it and away from it um, all the way up to, you know, if you're a family that your child did come home and say, hey, I'm the opposite gender. They disconnected themselves from you entirely. They had surgery, all of these things. Um, any stage of these stories, I feel like everybody needs to know about them. Everybody needs to hear them. They need to know that they're not alone. And there are also so many people that need to know that this is a real thing and how harmful and dangerous it is. Um, so we need to shine more light on this issue because as i said before i think a lot of people think that it's not that big of a deal that it's not going to affect them and it's not going to affect their child um, and i think that um, we need to know just how prevalent it is and just how easy it is to get pulled into these circumstances so please send your story to me my email address is in the description box please leave your comments below um, i would love your feedback and thank you so much for being here today